We can use polarizers to block out polarized reflections from our images, but what if we wanted to increase the effect of polarized reflections? Well, it turns out you can do that using the exact same filter that you use to block them out. I came across this interesting use of a polarizer when I was reading Light, Science and Magic, and this is a fantastic book for anyone who's into product photography, but it's also pretty useful for those of us making landscapes or taking portraits. So check this out. I've got a print and a bowl of water. So the light that's going from the print directly to the camera is gonna be unpolarized light. But any light that reflects off the surface of the water is going to be polarized. With this setup, we can make three different images. The first is a picture without a polarizer. And that way, the non-polarized light from the print and the polarized light from the reflection are gonna be at their maximum brightness. In the second image, we've got the polarizer on the lens and I've oriented it so that the polarized reflections off the water get completely blocked out. We effectively have no polarized light hitting the sensor. The non-polarized light from the print is also going through that filter. So with non-polarized light, the polarizer is essentially acting like an ND filter. If I turn the polarizer 90 degrees, we can take our third shot. In this setup, all of the polarized light is now allowed through the filter. There's no orientation of light left to get blocked. So it's the same as it was when we didn't have a filter on at all. But the light from the print is still going through the ND effect of the polarizing filter. So it's the same strength as it was in the second shot where the polarizer was at a different orientation. We're changing the ratios of the light coming directly from the print and the light being reflected off the surface of the water. All of this becomes apparent when we look at the images on the computer screen. These three images were taken with the exact same exposure settings on the camera. The first one had no filter. The second one had the polarizer on the camera oriented to not allow any polarized reflections through. I think most people when they're buying a circular polarizer or a linear polarizing filter are out to try and decrease reflections. So image two is usually the desired result. But in image three, we orient the polarizer 90 degrees from the second one so that we get the maximum reflection of polarization. Let's compare that side by side to image one. I've equalized the brightness of the image taken without a polarizer and the one with a polarizer. For this particular setup in the conditions I have in this room, the effect is more subtle than I was expecting. Though to be fair, if it was more dramatic, you probably would have heard about this technique sooner. When we flip backwards and forwards between the two images, we can see the effect come and go. And when we zoom in, we can see that the reflection with no filter on the lens isn't quite as crisp as the image with the polarizer present. I went and tried this method on a few different scenes to see if I could get a less subtle effect. It's interesting how different objects will give you different results. Here's a photograph taken at dusk at a historic burial ground. First picture was taken with no filter at all. The second picture is what you'd usually use a polarizing filter for, it darkens the sky. And the polarizer is set to minimize the polarized reflections. In the third image, I've rotated the filter 90 degrees so I can maximize the polarized light that's allowed through the filter. In post-production, I've adjusted all of the images so that the diffused reflections from the monument are the same luminosity in every shot. The effect's still subtle, but the sky is 5% brighter relative to the monument than when there's no filter on the lens. But I found a better example. In this instance, I'm gonna take a picture of this black rolling camera case. Darker objects are gonna help us out because they'll have the same polarized reflections that a lighter object has, but there are fewer diffuse reflections. So the polarized light dominates what's being reflected off the object. It's the same set of three pictures. The first one with no filter. The second with the filter set to minimize polarized light. And the third, the filters rotated 90 degrees to maximize the polarized light that's let through the filter. I raise the exposure on the filtered shot so that the background is the same exposure on all three images. 
light is being polarized at different orientations on different parts of the case. So let's concentrate at the top surface, the lid of the case. When I flip these pictures back and forwards between no filter and the polarizer, letting the maximum amount of polarized light through, the lid's brighter when I'm using a filter relative to the background than when I'm using no filter at all. I think it's really cool. We're using a polarizer not to reduce reflections, but to effectively increase them. We've just used a polarizer to make a reflection stronger. I appreciate that maximizing polarized reflections is not a common use case. And that might be why this is probably the only video about it on YouTube. But if you can think of a practical real world example where we can use this technique, let us know in the comments below.